Hey Shooby Doodlers, how are you doing? Well today I'm going to show you how to draw Peter Rabbit. Uh, I'm going to choose this version here because that's the one I like best. And I'm going to start off thinking about this head. It's kind of quite square on the sides. So I'm just going to very gently kind of put two kind of squares like that. And then it kind of goes sort of up and slightly down into that. And then at the bottom it's fairly kind of regular says so up and down like that it's probably going in slightly there and then that's going up into the ear which is going to like that and it's kind of quite of a sharp turn and it's sort of down and then slightly curved out like that and then here we want this to come kind of curving slightly so it's a very gentle kind of s slope and then that's going to come around a bit deeper, I think, too. Kind of like that. This is coming around. That, so this is kind of looking quite good, I think. And that will come around and up to there. So I think this is maybe a little deep. So I'm going to take some of that off. Now the eye is probably starting at about halfway. So... It's kind of, if you think of it like a circle, but we're going to chop a little bit off the top there. There's a dot there and a dot there. So we want the, the kind of the white shininess there. And then there's also a tiny little bit of shininess there too. Funny little, uh, probably up a little bit there. Little V for the nose with a kind of an ooh. And a couple of lines there we got. Um, whiskers coming out there, whisker coming there, whisker, whisker. Um, that'll do for the moment. Okay, now the coat is coming from right in the middle of the neck, so it's coming coming down here. So if we think of head heights, it's about one and a half head heights, so it's going to be one, so it's to around about here, something like that. Um, and that's coming in there, that will come down to an angle. You can use your pencil like this to work out the angles. That's going to come around right about like that and down and up. And then we want a button and a button and a button and a button. And then we've got kind of chest coming out like that. And then we've got quite a round kind of very rabbity kind of <laughs> hips kind of look shape around there with a scut there is it? is it called a scut for a rabbit bobtail i don't know something like that and we have a little feet there so that's coming in up there and then we want the coat coming out and kind of echoing that side and then we're going to have that good if you saw me drawing the Flopsy bunnies, Mrs. Mrs. Flopsy, well, there's just Flopsy. Um, you'll know that I kind of drew in this sepia ink with a dip pen, which isn't what I normally do. You normally see me drawing with a rotary pen, but this is just so much more subtle that I'm drawing with with a dip pen to get that kind of subtle lines. So you can get very very thin lines. Uh, they're very very thin but the harder you press you get a kind of a slightly wider line and Beatrix Potter's put a bit of shade in there too I think like that and in there but she's using very fine lines around these kind of edges and here I think we need a little curve there for this to sort of come into like that that's good and then she's also got a few little lines and I picked up a bit of fluff on the end of the nib there as well so I'm just going to get rid of and then we want this to be kind of quite furry in a way it's just got a little kind of lump there and then when we come around here oh well, let's do it this side first so that's coming down but then she's doing um not complete lines she's doing these kind of little furry 
mark so here that's that's looking good so I'm just going to put this little nose in there and a little mouth and the eye I think is really really important to get this right so I'm going to do that like that I need, and I, I think I'm going to paint the other bit in there this little line here is, is needs to be so delicate I'm going to use that do that in paint and she's got this kind of double reflection which is almost kind of like a <laughs> manga <laughs> sort of Japanese style there and we've got a little little eyebrow just sticking out there and then we want a whiskers we've got one whisker coming down like that and then we want one whisker coming out there and one coming out there. Actually, I'm quite pleased with that. It's, I think I've got a bit of a look of him there. So now we need to draw coming down to the sleeve. Obviously, the sleeves are a bit long for him and his little paws aren't sticking it out. And she's done a little bit of kind of something there to give her an effect and she hasn't actually drawn these buttons all the way around so you know she, she leaves she does quite a bit of drawing but she leaves a lot to the paint for the painting to, to sort of fill in the final bits and here you can see as I press I get a sort of a wider line and we want this which gives us kind of extra shadow really there so here and then this can come a little bit thicker as I come down there and here we need to get this very very delicate sort of chest fluff <laughs> uh, we're going to take this down to here all the way down to this kind of point where it comes out into the hips sort of like that and we can come around that way and here again we've got this kind of curling around and and we can then just do this very simple foot she's not done anything complicated and again another very simple foot a potential little line there just to show the bottom of the tummy sort of coming over the edge there and we'll bring that up there she's done a few extra lines there she's done a few and little lines coming there and a couple there and there and these are just kind of texture really <laughs> I think these lines and we are almost there I'm getting quite pleased with this um so here we want this sort of line just kind of appearing out of nowhere really and that's going to sort of come down and then we'll come around and then it needs a little bit of more shade there and then I want this sort of coming in kind of around like that and so we need to kind of uh, do a bit of shade there but it's got to kind of have the fur sticking out like that good I'm very pleased with that so this is waterproofing so I'm going to make sure that it's really dry before I start painting and I'm going to use my hairdryer and then I'm going to very very gently erase all those pencil lines away if you don't wait for the ink to dry then it's obviously it's going to smudge all over the place and do it very gently because otherwise you're going to rough up the surface of the paper and that's not going to help when it comes to painting so I'm going to be working on this much like I did with the flopsy bunnies and I'm going to start off with some Naples yellow that's quite strong actually so I'm going to thin the brush down and and I'm just going to kind of, oh, don't want it really on the blue, but there. Um, and I think we'll probably make sure it's quite bright over the top there. And it can probably be a bit darker over here too, yeah. Um, so this is, I'm doing this really just to kind of warm it up. And um, give that nice kind of warmth. But... A bunny rabbit tummy is pretty pale so I'm kind of really thin thinning the water now so that it's just kind of white on the edge and very pale 
Naples yellow gives that lovely warmth. And now I think it's just, I think she's used a lot of very small little brush strokes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay kind of a, a brownish um, undercoat just to kind of thicken up those kind of colours. And I put a little bit around there, I think, into there. And we're going to need some here just coming into the cheek just underneath the eye like that and then they're just kind of kind of fade away maybe a few little hints of something there and then um and then again we want some over the top of the eye and down to the top of the nose i'm cleaning the brush again so I'm wetting the edge here to give it get a kind of a softer edge over the eye. And then again, I'm just putting a little bit. This is mostly burnt sienna that I'm doing here. Burnt sienna, and there's probably a bit of, a little bit of sepia kind of mixed in with it. And as she uses these tiny, tiny little strokes, um, brush strokes to get the fur effect. So that's kind of why I'm doing this dip, dab, dip, dab. And those who follow me will know that this is. I'm using a Rosemary & Co series 344. I'm not sponsored by them, um, but I've just discovered rosemary paintbrushes and, and, uh, and I have fallen in love with this brush. Um, I just ordered some brushes to see what they were like, really. And this one arrived. I've never had one which is quite so long and pointy before. And, and it really is pointy. And you get these fantastic, you know, you can... Oh, you just get such control over the point of the brush. It's, it's really flexible. And what, all the time I was using it first, I've used oh, my first brush up completely on a book I was working and it's just kind of lost its ness. <laughs> so I had to get a new one. And when I got the new one, I went to order it. And went, oh my goodness, it's, it's, I completely forgot that it's, um, it's actually uh, synthetic. And I, all the time I thought I'd been working with Sable. <laughs> so, so that just shows how good um, paints, it, it, you know, synthetic brushes have, che have got these days. So um, the, the only problem with it, because it's so much bigger, hang on, I'm just thinking about this, um, because it's so much longer, it, it holds quite a lot of liquid and brush paint. Um, so, so that's just, it's not a problem, it's just different. So, um, I've sort of got used to that. I've sort of constantly got my little piece of kitchen towel in my hand, um, to, to keep drying the brush when it gets a bit, if it's a bit too wet and there's too much color. So, um, but that's not a problem, but it's a bonus because it does carry such a lot. When you're doing a big area, it's um, it just covers fantastically, and also you've got this incredible control over tiny little brush strokes because they're just so pointed. Uh, it is such a pointed, you know, little brush. <laughs> this is a number six. I, I recently got a four, which I haven't used yet. So if I was doing something a little bit finer, maybe I would get the four out, which would be a little bit finer and a bit more, you know, get a bit more control in this kind of, in fact, let me do that now. Here we are, this is a number four. Let me see how this works. Cause I'm using some fairly sort of small little marks here. I want this still to be a bit more brown. I say, look, you get this incredibly, <laughs> incredibly fine brush strokes you're getting so we need some along here as well and then so she's using these little marks to also to get a kind of a movement in here and a, a kind of a movement of which way the um the fur is is kind of lying on the head and also to give kind of a shape to the head as well by by kind of curving these little marks so that's sort of coming quite nicely there and this is making that slightly darker there I 
think we need to have some more in here. Little marks. So there, I was pressing a bit too deep. You see, I'm not using the point. I'm getting a little V shape. Every brush has its own kind of little marks that it makes, depending on how you're holding it and pressing it. And, and uh, how's that looking in the camera? It's looking rather dandy, I think. So, <laughs> so um, yeah. And if you didn't see my uh, Flopsy Bunny video, go, go and have a look at that. You click up here somewhere. I got a, I'm doing a whole um, Beatrix Potter um, playlist, so you can go and see. I'm reading the stories in case you don't know them or you want to hear them again. You've forgotten all about the, how the stories go. Um, if you just want a bedtime story, you want me to read it to you, just click that button and there you go. So I'm I'm going to work my way through all the Beatrix Potter stories I've decided. And uh, But the Flopsy Bunnies, uh, I went to the British Museum uh, a couple of weeks ago and actually had in my hands, I had to wear white gloves, um, I went to the Prince Department and you have to go and knock on doors and ring bells and sign your life away and all sorts of things and they let you in. And... Uh, and they had this original Beatrix Potter artwork there and I just spent the whole afternoon with it really really looking closely at how she worked I'm not working like this is this is much bigger than she works um, but it was just this is one of the best art lessons I've ever had actually just looking so intensely at her her drawings I think if you go to a gallery normally you, you kind of look at pictures in a frame or you get a book you kind of look at them and but actually sat at this <laughs> fantastic old Victorian tables um, in the Prince department and they're actually having the real thing there and I spent you know a good couple of hours just really really looking at them and working out what exactly she <laughs> what exactly she did and how she did it and um, I think, oh, I need to spray a bit pale something. Mm, I think there's just a little bit of paleness in there, I think. Yeah, good. I think this can come up a little bit there too. Good. I think I'm going to pretty much leave that alone now. And, um, yeah, so it, as I say, it's just like the best art lesson I've ever had I think <laughs> and what I really really did appreciate was um, what am I using this is Prussian blue I think it's a very kind of Prussian blue that color but uh, first of all I'm going to put a bit of yellow in these buttons I'm using cadmium yellow which I don't know if that's what she used I think it's a bit too bright so I'm just going to drop in a little bit of something ochre just to kind of dull them down a bit and then again I think I need to make sure that is dry um, I could maybe I just get a little bit of oh, sort of oranginess just to get the goldness of the button the brass of the buttons and if you can see here this Prussian blue has come very very gritty for some reason and that's going to appear in the paint, and I don't want that. Something I feel like something's gone wrong with that, like it's gone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that settle for a moment. And then, so we let the, the bits float to the bottom, and then I'm just going to... Just take the water, the coloured water, off the top. Um, good, there we are. That's not looking too bad. So if you get gritty watercolour paint, ugh, then the thing to do is to just leave it and let the... Where did that pink come from? <laughs> let the grittiness just settle to the bottom and that'll kind of sink to the bottom and then you can just kind of... <laughs> just take the water from the top and then that will be nicely coloured it won't be gritty because you don't want grit in your watercolour. And blues are traditionally rather bad for being gritty. 
So I'm just doing that and then going to, oh, a bit more blue. I'm going to come here and then we need to kind of trickle into these little hairs, little bits of the edge of the fur like that. And she hasn't put much light and shade in this blue at all, I don't think. So I'm just going to maybe do something like that which she hasn't really done um, and, but then I'm not looking at the original I'm looking at a, a reproduction and however good reproductions are there's always a little bit of detail left out so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to a little bit of sepia maybe a hint of green and um, Beatrix Potter just kind of puts this kind of blech, kind of shade in the background just to give a kind of a feeling of depth. So that's what I'm going to do like that. And I'm cleaning my brush and then I'm just going to kind of dab around the edges with clean water and then the whole thing will just kind of vignette as it were. Um, and it'll just kind of fade and then I might put a little bit more um, colour just in there and there we go I think <laughs> I'm going to stop that there <laughs> before I do anything wrong uh, and I'm quite pleased with that and I hope you enjoyed that make sure you're subscribed for lots more Beatrix Potter all sorts of other stuff and there we go Thanks for watching and you can support this channel and get so much more on my Patreon page. Click to find out more. Make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rain and Drawing channel on YouTube and in the meantime, keep drawing, 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 practice, practice, practice and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.